can't score, um, that's putting us in a deficit. You know, we, we you know come out, miss a couple shots, they get transitions, they get some good looks, goes in. Um, we fouled it way too much tonight as well. Um, it has 31 free throw attempts. 38, I'm sorry. Yeah, 38 free throw attempts. You know, so we got to do a better job of playing without fouling as well, um, but just slowing the slowing the game down. You know, we can't get out in transition. You know, a team that wants to play with pace, and we can't do that. You know, we foul in 38. Get them to the line 38 times. So, um, but we got to find ways to score in the third quarter. AD, when you guys play with the roster, you starting at the five, and you get out rebounded by almost 20. What what needs to happen that's not happening? Boxing out. Um, that's really it. Just gotta you know find bodies. You know, we a lot of times we turn and you know look for the basketball, and then the perimeter crashers you know come in and get the rebounds, and um, you know shot go up. We gotta turn around and find bodies, and you know hit guys, and then go pursue the basketball. AD, do you think this team is capable of defending in the style that, that you guys have sort of started out to play? And if so, is it sort of understanding? Is it effort? What's sort of the missing piece there if, if this team can play that way? A um, little bit of both. Effort um, is number one. Um, communication, I think, is number two. It's talking. Um, everybody just doing their job. You know, Biggs doing what we're supposed to do. On oh, pick and roll coverages, um, guards doing what they're supposed to do um, uh, with guard guard screens. You know, everyone just has to do their job and follow the game plan. Um, we can be an elite defensive team. We got um, great defenders, but we got to be able to do it as a collective, and um, that's what we're lacking, especially in the third quarter. And I think a lot of it is just, <clears throat> you know, you miss a couple shots, you know. Um, you know, guys get get down, and now it kind of affects our defense. You know, when shots go in, obviously um, defense kind of rises. But you know, when you miss a couple of shots, the defense just kind of fades away. And then Jason Tatum got it going. You know, uh, you know off that low block, so they do a better job with that. But um, we can be a elite defensive team if we want to. Just got to do a better job of bringing that energy and effort and, and communication. AD, you said the other night that um, you guys built a new team and you hadn't seen it yet. Um, that's still true, but getting LeBron back is a, a big piece of it. Does does it does it feel different, or does the mentality change a little bit with him back that you can kind of start building as closer to a whole group where it's maybe at least you're at a foundation here as opposed to the last eight games when it kind of felt like just trying to figure it out on a night-to-night -night basis? Um, yeah, we have our core guys. Um, the foundation is there. Um, but we still have enough, you know, with or without LB, you know, even when he wasn't playing to win basketball games, you know. So, um, obviously, him on the floor helps us tremendously. Um, leadership is communication, his voice. So, um, still got to find ways to get it done. And like you said, we got that. We got the, the three-headed snake, three-headed monster, where we can go out and, and compete every night. But, um I don't think it's our offense. You know, I think it's our defense, honestly. We just got to do a better job on the defensive end. Uh, we do that. We get stops. You know, the offense, you know, is going to come and you get better rhythm shots um, and feel like you're in a rhythm. You know, instead of playing out the, bat, out the, out the rim all the time um, or fouling, you know, and they get a chance to set their defense. So uh, we got to play to our strengths, and our strengths is, is running in transition and getting good looks. And uh, we can't do that if we continuously um, fouling. But we got our three guys, uh, three main guys, and you know our guy. I mean, Taylor is over six tonight. Um, it's not going to happen again. You know, um, just got to find guys to play together um, and get in the rhythm. You know, when when LB's back, the game's a lot different. You know, when when LB's back, because he handling so it kind of take Taylor off the ball um, when he has the ball in his hand, pick and roll. So we got to find a way to incorporate him and get him more shots and get him in the rhythm as well. Eddie, how did LeBron look to you out there tonight? And was there any sort of adjustment period with him coming back? Uh, he looked good. He looked looked really good to me. Um, like his old self. 
You know, it's always a – and when you're out eight games and we're playing a certain way and then he comes back, you know, it's always an adjustment. Um, no practice time. Um, like I said, I think the adjustment is trying to figure out what to do with Taylor. Um, but just with everybody, you know, just trying to get back in the rhythm with him now playing, figuring out the starting lineup, you know, all of that. So, um, we'll be fine. We just got to continue to, to push through. Um, hopefully we can get guys back sooner than later um, and look at this roster. But, you know, I think we got more than enough right now. You know, why uh, while our guys are getting back to, to win basketball games. And, you know, we got three games left on this road trip. Um, Moving in the right direction uh, to come into the Boston and lay an egg like they did tonight was was uh, was was kind of bad, you know, to get beat up like they did by a team that was kind of struggling themselves. But well, you always know a struggling team is dangerous. Uh, and the Lakers struggling themselves to be uh, – to be out rebounding the way they were, to be beat up in the paint uh, the way they were, the amount of layups that the Celtics were able to get by just moving and playing good, solid basketball, which is kind of embarrassing uh, for the Lakers to to have that kind of performance. So, yeah, there's somewhat of a little virus in there. You know, they, you feel good some days. You'll play a good game against Milwaukee. Next day, the virus sets in. Oh, I'm a little sick. Third quarter, I mean, not physically sick yeah. but but third quarter woes again you know the same old mistakes are not being corrected so that's a problem so I'm you know I want to give them the benefit of the doubt LeBron came back tonight but you cannot have performances like this over and over and over mm -hmm. so now I'm thinking that wow what's wrong with the team what's going on with the communication What's happening in the locker room? Not that there's anything negative going on, but it's a communication there. What's happening from the transfer, from the chalkboard to the players to the floor? Why isn't it happening? So I know it takes time, but that kind of basketball, you don't like to see lack of effort, lack of, you know, determination. Just when you start a game like they did, you know, you Oh, we're, we're fighting. We're right there. And then up 14. All of a sudden, when that goes away, it makes you wonder, you know, what's what's wrong? I mean, it's kind of kind of weird to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, one of the toughest things, like with a new group that you'll you'll end up facing is when adversity hits, like yeah. we're still trying to figure each other out. Right. And I'm not sure if like when the fire alarm goes off, like, are you are you going to run? <laughs> you know, what I mean? like. Or are we going to stay and help put out the fire? Like, which, <laughs> which way are you going to go, Geets? Yeah. And that's important to know. Otherwise, well, I'm not staying here to put the fire out if you're not going to mm. risk yourself either. Not like, knowing ooh, each other yet. Not knowing Trust. each other enough right. and trusting, okay, we're going to work our way back into this game this way. Not me trying to do it, and then I'll try to do my thing. And then, So I think there's a combination of things that are happening one, I think the smaller lineup is making it more difficult to protect the paint, right? Yep. 56 points in the paint for the Celtics tonight. 56 to 36. And, and so, which is, if the smaller lineup was allowing us to be more effective offensively, right, scoring more points, then you'd have to kind of choose, well, which one do we want? But with the smaller lineup and only scoring 102, it's like you're not getting the benefit of the smaller lineup. Lastly, I still think that there's a tug of war between, from an identity standpoint, for a lot of guys individually, right? And you're trying to figure out, how do I do my thing and us win? And sometimes those two things have to be separated. Yes. And it's just, do I want to win? Doesn't matter how it looks, doesn't what, matter what my stat line is, what my minutes are. The amount of energy, intensity, detail, Game plan, discipline, communication, like all of those things have to be maximum. Yeah. And you might not like the way the stat sheet looks, but your team wins more than the other team. And I, I, it's making that decision that that's the only reason I'm out here. There's still a little bit of resistance to that, that this team has to go through where they can become more consistent in their performance. It's not about losing. You're going to lose a lot of games in the NBA. <laughs> But it's how they're losing at times that it just doesn't quite sit as well. They can figure it out. There's time. 
but you want to see more of the we're in this together feeling doesn't quite look that way to consistently. Answer, to answer your question, I think you already knew the answer. I'm staying right here to fight the fire with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's got the fire extinguisher over there. Okay. The staying right here. Yeah, no doubt. Um, to me, the, the biggest storyline for the whole season, you know,